Hey everyone, Purple here, and I've played a lot of Horizon 4. I've raced and tuned many cars, and I've raced against many tunes and cars. Not only that, but as some of you already know, I run a series of tuning guides on individual cars, which lets me interact and constantly receive feedback from the Forza community. And from interacting with sets out of the community, I've noticed a lot of common mistakes, namely five. Uh, which I will address in this video in hopes of letting players better understand how to tune any car they want in order to be competitive. We'll start with a relatively simple and very common mistake, and then we'll start speaking about more or lesser known ones as the list develops, so let's get straight into it. Number 5 is only driving all-wheel drives. Now, logically, having all-wheel drive is something you'd like to have over your competition in real life. After all, it's objectively the best drivetrain when it comes to competition, I mean, it's literally so good in comparison to rear and front wheel drive that it's straight up banned from most forms of motorsport, and is only used in either the roughest of conditions or the fastest cars out there. However, this doesn't mean you should want every single car you drive to be all-wheel drive, and that's because Forza has a little thing called PI system. Now, you're a Forza player, so I doubt I'll have to go into too much detail explaining what the PI is, but it's important that you know that your car in this game is nothing but a big mix of numbers regarding your performance. And when you swap a car into becoming all-wheel drive, that number obviously skyrockets because all-wheel drive is really good. All-wheel drive drastically improves your handling and control, sure, but it's not always the most efficient way of spending your PI. Just look at the numbers. Here's an A-class all-wheel drive Miata and here is an A-class rear-wheel drive Miata. Both of these cars have been tuned in the exact same way, the only difference being their drivetrains, and as you can see, because the first Miata is all-wheel drive, it doesn't have as much room for power upgrades as the rear-wheel drive Miata. Handling on the car is nice, but you never want too much handling, just enough to not make it a death trap. Now this isn't to say all-wheel drive in Forza is absolute garbage, quite the opposite actually, it's really good, but only in certain conditions. Notably enough, you'll find that it's most useful in places where it would succeed in real life, rallying and high-performance cars. In other words, all-wheel drive only really works in S1 and S2. However, it sometimes also works in A-Class as long as it's rally, although I've personally found that rear and front-wheel drive cars tend to outperform them if driven by a competent player, as all-wheel drive does make your car significantly heavier and less agile, but hey, you do you. Next up on number 4 we have yet another tuning mistake, which is not tuning your gears. This is something that's surprisingly a lot more common than you might think if you've been playing this game for a while. I've come across a lot of people who seem to either just upgrade their car and call it a day, or have absolutely no idea what they're doing with their gears because their tuning is god-awful. Just because your car can go, I don't know, 500 miles per hour, it doesn't actually mean you need that top speed in the race. It won't do you any good if you don't have enough acceleration or a long enough straight to reach those speeds after all. Not only that, but your top speed is very highly dependent on what type of car you'll be tuning. So for example, if you're building a rally car, you're gonna want a lot more acceleration than an asphalt car, therefore less top speed. On the screen, I've put an approximate of which top speeds you should be aiming for whenever you tune a car. It varies from car to car, and you should tune the gearing for every car independently, but this is a good basis for beginners, or for someone who just wants a quick tune. Just adjust your final drive towards acceleration in each one of these until you get these speeds, and you're set. For number 3, I've chosen unnecessary Forza Aero. This bit's gonna be short, as the reasoning for it is pretty similar to the all-wheel drive swaps. It's just an unnecessary upgrade as a whole, and you're much better off spending your PI elsewhere. Forza Aero on A-Class and below really doesn't do anything besides make the car slower but easier to drive. You can easily stay on the road at such a low class as long as you have good tires and reasonable throttle control. In S1 it's a little bit different, but for the most part you don't need it either. It's not a complete crutch when compared to A-Class though. If you use Aero in an A-Class car, you're just bad. I, I'm sorry, there's no other way around that you just bad the game. 
If we're talking S2, however, then you definitely need it. Your car will fly off the road if you're not using Aero and S2, no doubt about it. Number two is tires, and this is actually something I get a lot in my comment sections. I don't mean stuff like, oh, you should almost always get race tires in A class and above, mm, because that's obvious. You can get away with just sports tires on some A class cars, though. What I mean here is tire thickness. Now, ideally, you'd want your tires to be as thick as possible on our four wheels. The more rubber you have keeping your car on the road, the better. However, if you've watched my Horizon guys, you've probably noticed that I only increase tire thickness on the drive wheels. So if it's rear-wheel drive, I get tire thickness on the back, front-wheel drive on the front, all-wheel drive on all four wheels, etc. And this is because tire thickness in particular increases your PI way more than it should. It does increase your performance and overall grip to the road in some cars, yes, but not by much. It's by no means worth the actual amount of PI it takes up, and you're much better off spending that elsewhere and instead only increasing the tire thickness in your drive wheels because you want as much rubber as you can have between your engine and the road. If you've got a lot of power and not enough rubber to put it down, you're just gonna have a lot of wheel spin, trust me. And finally, for number one, I've picked not having a test track. Now, usually, when I'm tuning a car just for the sake of, you know, driving it around, having some fun with friends, seeing how it does in A-class, basically, if it's not really a serious tune, I won't bother spending all the extra time taking it around the test track and seeing how it does. But if it's a more serious tune that I'm already spending a bit of time on, like for example a Horizon Guide tune, or just a competitive tune overall, then I always take it for a few spins in one of my test tracks. I think that if you really care about how a tune performs, then it's extremely important to have some sort of benchmark to compare it on, in this case being a lap time around a certain track. Me, personally, I use a Lakehurst Cope circuit for all of my asphalt cars, and for my rally cars, I use a custom trail I've made called the Mud Forest Rally Trail. It starts in one of the sprints at the Horizon Festival, but I forgot its name. I'll probably put it on the screen or something. But basically, what you should do is have some sort of reference lap time per class you should aim for. Generally an average one, because you obviously don't want it to be impossible for most cars to reach because you set it in, I don't know, a bone shaker or something. And then compare your car's performance to that lap time. For rally, I also have different time set depending on drivetrain, but it's completely up to you on whether or not you want to go into that much detail with your tunes. And that's it. 5 very common tuning mistakes for the players make. I know tuning can be pretty hard and overwhelming for anyone who's new to racing games. Trust me, I've been there not too long ago. So I really hope this video helped serve as a strong basis for both new players and players who are looking to go a little bit more in-depth with their tunes. If there's anything else you'd like to suggest for tuning, feel free to share your opinion and tips in the comments below. I'll see you all in the next video.